Woodley gave him a pre-screening before the show. Hey, hey, Florian, uh, if you want to keep riding my nuts, then you have to say exactly what I tell you to say. And that's exactly what happened. Woodley told Kenny Florian what to say word for word so he could jock his strap even more than he already was. And then Kenny Florian goes out there and he's out here acting impartial. First off, he's a fuck force rep. He's not supposed to be acting impartial to fighters or to the show. And he's out here acting impartial against me. And he's plagiarizing. He's a plagiarist in the first place. He shouldn't even have a job with Fox. But I know he got on his hands and knees and he had to stuff Dana off real quick to get back in that job. But let's go. Let's move on. Let's talk about what Kenny Florian and Tyrell Woodley are talking about on the show. Kenny Florian's out here saying, oh, I need to win four or five more fights, blah, 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 three fights more. Motherfucker, are you stupid? Are you that dumb? Like, you're a little midget, bro. You got to... You got a you got a title shot when you were five and two and you beat Kit Cope, Alex Carolexis, and a bunch of nobodies that nobody's ever heard of. These guys that are washed up, you never beat even a legend or anybody in the sport. Look at my record. I beat the best Asian superstar in the in the history of the sport, Doug Lum Kim. And then I beat the best Brazilian welterweight to ever do it. The guy with second most wins in UFC history, Damian Mine, and I left him bloodied and quit and beat. Like the guy's a complete joke. I'm next in line for the title. Or I'm fighting for an interim title. That, that's what it's going to be. So, you know, Kenny Florian's out here act, spreading fake news and being a fake fuck, you know, a plagiarist and an impartial little fuck. So I'm going to call him out, man. I'm the king of truth. I'm a realist. That's what I do. I spread truth. So at the end of the day, it, it, it seems to you, I actually didn't get a chance to watch the clip. I just read your guys, uh, you know, jabs back and forth. But at the end of the day, it's the fact that he, uh, he thinks that you need to do a lot more to get a title shot that – most people believe you burned at this point. Yeah, exactly, man. He's just like, oh, you got to beat this guy, and then if you beat that guy, you got to beat this guy, and then if you beat that guy, you got to beat this guy. Like, dude, come on, man. Like, you're a complete joke. I just beat the guy that completely cleared out the division. He beat Carlos Condit in a, in a minute. He choked him out, and that's a former interim champ. I mean, he beat Matt Brown. He beat all these great fighters. He's on one of the longest win streaks in the company's history, man. He cleared out the whole entire division. And I just beat that guy in the most impressive fashion anybody's ever beat that guy. Anderson Silva didn't even beat Damian Maia that bad. He didn't leave him bloody in, in, in a pool full of blood. I left him in a, in a pool full of blood, battered and beaten. He was not going to continue. He was already finished at the end of the third round. He wouldn't have came off the stool for the fourth. So, you know, I just... I, I, don't, I don't agree with Teddy Ford. He, I mean, he's a little midget, dude. The fact that he's trying to talk shit to a welterweight when he's a little midget, and he's not even a good fighter as it is. You know, the guy's a complete joke, dude. So, you know, I had to put him on blast, and, and I hit him, I put him on blast with the truth, you know. So if he wants to come out here and keep spreading this fake news and be impartial because he's riding Tyro Woodley's jock strap, then I'm going to call him out for it. Rightfully so, rightfully so. And, and I would expect nothing less from you, man. You're... Always hot on the mic. The insults are, are very clever. Again, simple Jack. I laughed my ass off at that. Uh, <laughs> everybody said he's looked like Ben Stiller for, for years. But move, looking uh, at a heavier weight class, you, you had a little bit of a spat with uh, Chase Sherman as, as well. What happened there? Uh, yeah, I mean, the guy's a complete joke, you know, another joke in the, in the UFC. You know, the guy's a jobber. Let's be honest. The guy's a jobber. He doesn't even have a 50-50 win record in the UFC. And he's out here trying to spout off about my name. Motherfucker, I got a 95% win rate. Like, like I'm unbeaten. I've never even been touched in the octagon, man. I, I've never even been knocked down ever, even in, in the training or sparring. Bro, you're out here getting knocked out every fight, dude. Like, he's a complete jobber. So, you know, I had to call him out for what it was. You know, he's out here trying to be this internet sensation. But he's not doing anything that ain't that hard, man. He's just putting a bunch of memes and a bunch of, of videos of the coolest hot video is in the topic. And it's not even him doing his Instagram or Twitter. That's the funny part. It's his fake-ass manager, Malki Kawa. That's that fake fuck trying to build his guy's brands and talk shit to me back. So, you know, it wasn't even like a really direct shot at, at Chase Sherman. It's more at fucking Malki Kawa trying to talk shit behind Chase Sherman's account. So you think you think Malki's got it out for you? Yeah, of course he's got it out for me. He's fuck. Don't you think, bro? He's John Jones' fucking manager. He's Tyro Woodley's manager. Why would why wouldn't that fake fat fuck have it out for me? Yeah, you make a great point there. I know you've had a a, a lot to say about Jones and obviously Woodley. Uh, do, do you think he's maybe just trying to defend his fighter, or do you think he literally has a uh you know a specific beef with you? Oh, he has a specific beef with me, and he's gonna he's gonna use every fighter that he has, every outlet from every fighter that he has to take shots at me and downplay my career. 
That's what it is, man. That's the game. All these little fake fucks out there. Malky Kawa, he's used on all his little lo- lower level fighters, you know, to, to take shots and make call out me to degrade my career and, career and kind of hold me down a little bit. But, you know, I can't be hold down, man. All these little fuckers are getting exposed for what they are. They're fake. Well, I got to tell you, man, you make you make a point there speaking about managers. Uh, you know, Dan Lambert really does have a great mind for the sport and the stuff you guys have gone, done together. Uh, you know I've praised you for, for the heel role all this time, and I got to say, uh, more people should, more managers should be inclined to maybe push their fighter to, to, to be that way. So <clears throat> it's very good stuff that, you know, Dan is on board with everything that you're doing. Uh, but listen, man, the biggest news of all, in my opinion, was the spoiler of Star Wars. Man, did that piss people off. What was the back like, backlash like from that? Man, let's be honest. Star Wars is for nerds and virgins. I did them a favor, Jason. They should be thanking me instead of sending me death threats. And no, I didn't watch it, Jason. I got laid. I went to Reddit. All my haters are virgins, so it was an easy way to ruin their pathetic lives. (laughs) You know, I I was going to ask, was that your inner bad guy coming out, or did you actually see the movie and you were upset with it? But it sounds like you just went to Reddit and decided to spill the beans. (laughs) <laughs> I I, come on, man. I, I ain't got two and a half hours to waste of my fucking life on some retarded movie like that. I'd rather just ruin it for all the nerds and virgins in the world. That's all my my haters anyways. <laughs> Listen, I think at the end of the day, man, there's much bigger stuff going on in the world. And, uh, you know, people for people to get upset about a movie spoiler really says something about, you know, where the culture is headed. Uh, I honestly found it pretty entertaining. But you did receive death threats. Yes, I did re- receive death threats. I, you know, people said they were going to bomb my house in Oregon. People were saying that they hope ISIS burns my family and this and that. So they were taking it a little too far. <laughs> Jesus, man. Really? ISIS? Yeah, ISIS. I hope ISIS burns your family. Wow. Wow, movie. What a shame. Yeah. <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. All right, man. Well, at the very least, it's been another incredible, entertaining, incredibly entertaining week for you. Uh, in conclusion, what does Colby Chaos want for Christmas, and what's your next move? Colby Chaos wants what he's rightfully earned. That's a shot at the world title, whether it be a shot at the at the real gold against Tyrell Woodley or be against the interim title against RDA. You know, Woodley's going to be on the sidelines, so I deserve my interim shot. It, it makes sense. You know, I'm going to get that interim, and then I'm going to bitch slap Woodley with the interim title. So RDA needs to quit hiding. He needs to come out and defend his country in Brazil. I am the king of Brazil. If he wants to be a hero in Brazil, he needs to come fight me for this intro. All right, man. Listen, always appreciate the time. Happy holidays to you and all your loved ones, man. Uh, we, we always appreciate having you on. Always a pleasure to speak with you. Any shout-outs you'd like to get him before we let you go? Yeah, big shout-out to BJ Penn Radio for always voicing my, my voice. And, and uh, Dan Lambert and American Top Team. None of this is possible without Dan Lambert, the man. We're taking over the game, man. We're going to be simultaneous world champs in the UFC and WWE at the same time. Mark my words. You, hear, you heard it here first. All right. I, and, I, and make sure you give a big shout-out to my boy, Chael P. Saunders. He's got a big fight coming up. He's going to fucking – he's going to beat the Twinkies out of Rampage Jackson. So, big shout-out to my boy, Chael Saunders. I love that dude. Yeah, have you guys got a chance to catch up at all since you've been back home in Oregon? No, not yet, man. I've been a little sick. You know, I had a little bronchitis, so uh, I haven't been able to do much. I've been kind of resting last But I'm going to see him, man. I got another week here, so I'm going to go visit him. All right, cool. Very good. Again, always a pleasure, Colby. Uh, looking forward to all the big things in the future and, and uh, catching up again soon. Again, have a great holiday and a Merry Christmas uh, to you and all your family, bro. Happy holidays, you filthy animals. <laughs> Greetings, virgins of Instagram. I hear a lot of talk of RDA being better than Damian Maya. Damian Maia is the best Brazilian welterweight of all time. He's had title shots in two different weight classes. He's had one of the longest welterweight win streaks in the history of the sport. He also has second most wins in UFC history for all weight classes. Fact of the matter is, RDA couldn't hold Damian Maia's Brazilian banana hammock. RDA can't handle the pressure that comes with saying my name. He's going to make all this money and have a chance to be the hero to his people and avenge that Dump of a country, Brazil, and he says I'm a nobody? Your whole country knows who I am. I'm your king. RDA, you don't want it because you know what I'll do to you, nerd. I'll stick your head in a toilet, take your lunch money, and stuff your ass in a locker. 
Dana White, you either give me my title shot or I'm going to take it. Either way, I'm going to make the welterweight division great again. This is the year of chaos, and I will be the new UFC welterweight champion.